I am a 46 year old dermatologist and this is what the back of my hand looks like. Our hands age faster than any other area of our body and can be a dead giveaway of aging. Today we're going to talk about the best remedies for hand aging and how to make the hands look more youthful. Whether your issue is sunspots, wrinkly hands, thin skin, protruding veins, or dryness, this video will cover everything you need to know to maintain healthy, youthful looking hands throughout the decades. How does hand skin age? How hand skin ages is different than other skin on other areas of our body. First of all, when looking under the microscope, the stratum corneum, which is the uppermost layer of the epidermis, which is the superficial most layer of the skin, has a thick stratum corneum layer. Now, what does that mean? Our hands are meant to induce trauma. Our fingers are meant to induce trauma. And the hands and soles have, the soles of the feet, have a thicker stratum corneum and thicker epidermis than other areas of the body. So any perturbation or any irritation can cause a thickening of that stratum corneum layer that can make it look dry, cracked, or fissured. That's why we get cracks on the bottoms of our heels because that stratum corneum layer, which is stock full of keratin, which is the protein that the corneocytes or keratinocytes or skin cells make, can come, become brittle and fissured, and that's why we get cracked heels. Hopefully you're using a 40% urea cream and you're not having cracked heels, but if you don't, that's what happens. So it's like your hands protect mechanism to protect it from trauma to have a thick stratum corneum dead skin cell layer on top of the epidermis. But with that said, the hand cells don't exfoliate off as readily as they do on like the face, the neck, the chest skin, or other areas of our body. So what happens is when there's pigment irregular distribution in the hands, like brown spots stick around a lot more on the backs of the hands than they do other areas of the skin. Melanocytes, which are the pigment producing cells, are always producing melanin. And sometimes with UV exposure, especially on the backs of the hands when we're driving, when we're living our life, and in, in the sun or in UV light, or even against blue blue light from our devices that's coming out of our tablets and our laptops and our screens and our phones will induce melanocyte proliferation and melanocyte pigment production, the cellular proliferation time and the desquamation, which is when the dead skin cells desquamate off, it's longer. Those dead skin cells kind of stick around longer and become like a brick and mortar layering to provide like a protective barrier on the backs of the hands. So what happens is when there's UV light or there's exposure to blue light or energy from our devices, you get brown spots and hyperpigmentation that is irregular, di irregularly distributed. Whereas if that happens on other areas of the body, the brown spots aren't as prominent because that epidermis is renewing itself at a faster pace. The transepidermal time is a lot slower on the hands than it is on the body. And what that means in English is the time that it become a basal layer stem cell, baby stem cell, it takes to become a mature keratinocyte or stratum corneum cell and then slough off, that is a longer period of time than it is on other areas of the body. So dead skin cells hang around a lot longer on the hands and that's why you get brown spots that are usually more apparent on the backs of the hands than on the arms or the chest or other areas of the body. Also, when you're driving, when you're outside, when you're in UV light, the hands get a lot more exposure on the dorsal side as opposed to the volar side, which makes it more prone to aging, atrophy, epidermal atrophy, dermal atrophy, fat atrophy, brown spot, melanocyte, pigment production of brown spots. All these things just hang around and linger in the hands more often than not. So the, one of the best treatments to reverse aging and to make us look less older on our hands is to treat the brown spots. Now there's different lasers that are engineered to treat brown spots. My favorite is the Pico laser. This is this guy right here. My lasers are like my babies. Okay, so this, I'm gonna introduce you to Pico. This is the Pico laser, which is a picosecond, which is a trillionth of a second, which is very, very fast. It's a photoacoustic instead of a photothermal reaction, which helps treat pigmentation very specifically and very elegantly to reduce brown spots on the backs of the hands. This guy is my power tool to um, reduce the appearance of brown spots on the backs of the hands. You can also use a 1064, you could use a YAG, you could use a 755 Alexandrite laser. There's different lasers that you can use. This one's my favorite. I'm a laser specialist. I've done a whole laser fellowship 
and I have access to just about every laser on the market, this one's my go-to and my favorite for brown spots or what we call in dermatology solar lentigines treatment on the backs of the hands. So just removing the brown spots alone will help rejuvenate hands and make them look younger. Now, say you erase the brown spots and your hands are looking good. There's other changes that can happen on the hands. Just like the skin on our face and other areas of our body, the epidermis and the dermis, which is composed of the papillary dermis and the reticular dermis, is basically the structural support of the skin. That's where all the extracellular matrix proteins are, like the collagen, the elastin, the glycosaminoglycans, all all those sugars and proteins in the skin that give skin its smooth, bouncy, thick contour, and babies have a ton of it. We lose it as we get older, but we really lose it in our hands. And so it atrophies, which in science and medicine means gets thinner over time. So then you start to see the structural components of the hands, the tendons, the veins, the ves vessels, and our hands become skeletonized. So just not even looking at the pigmentation or the color of the hands, just by looking at the dermal atrophy and the subcutaneous atrophy that happens that makes the hands look skeletonized, they become atrophic and they almost become like see-through. You can see the tendons and the vessels and everything under the hands that can make us look older or sickly or aged. And so the way we rejuvenate that is by usually using biostimulatory fillers in the hand. There's lots of fillers on the market. There's hyaluronic acid fillers, there's polyolactic poly acid, there is calcium hydroxyapatite, and there's a combination and then mixtures and different ratios, different G primes. There's so many different dermal fillers. But after doing this for almost 20 years now, my favorite filler for hand rejuvenation is radius. Not hyperdilute radius, just regular radius, which is calcium hydroxyapatite. I feel that dilute radius, one syringe per hand can really add back that volume and when you add that volume back by a biostimulatory filler the tendons and the bones and the vessels become softened and less apparent and that in and of itself can rejuvenate the hands so you throw in a pico laser to erase the brown spots and then you add in a little bit more fullness and volume to counteract the atrophy and the skeletonization of the hands that happens and you really have hands that are looking good and can look very youthful and rejuvenated in years younger than they really are look the sun is going down we're seeing sunset here in real time i just finished clinic guys and i saw 20 patients and did about 15 laser combined laser cases today so i'm a little a little tired, but I want to keep this content coming out to you. So, and again, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm basically a procedural dermatologist and laser specialist who sees patients all day, every day in my clinic and just kind of does YouTube on the side just to get some educational content out there for you because I feel that there's a need for non-sponsored content by board certified dermatologists who actually see and treat patients and are highly trained fellowship trained specialists to give this information to you because I'm not just here making YouTube videos all day. I'm basically just trying to get this out of the way before I leave today. I'm a little exhausted and hopefully we'll be done with this video before the sun goes down. Now let's talk about thin skin and wrinkly hands and texture. So what you do at home can actually go a long way as far as hand rejuvenation. I love using a 40% urea cream. You can get some that do not have a foul smell. Sometimes urea can not have a very pleasant smell, but there are ones that are odorless and the 40% urea cream will help hydrate and also desquamate the thick keratotic um, skin on the backs of the hands. So, also, you know, using hand creams, I love the Neutrogena. I think it's like the Norwegian fisherman's formula. I forget what it's called. Um, but any hand cream that has ceramides in it and natural moisturization factors in it will also be helpful. And so by using these creams at home, um, it could really be a good adjuvant for any in-office procedures that you do. Or if you want to just use, you know, at-home hand creams in and of itself, that will help rejuvenate the hands. Also, my favorite is a 0.1% tretinoin. If you take a pea-sized amount of tretinoin, and, or almost maybe a dime-sized amount of tretinoin, put it in the palms of your hands, mix it up together, and apply it to the backs of your hands, that's what I do every night when I go to bed. Now, I can't remember, because I've been doing it a very long time, if I first started using it, if it will cause some hand irritation, but a tretinoin is a prescription strength vitamin A derivative. Retinol will help too, but if you really want to go at it and that skin on the hands is thicker and tougher and more robust than the skin on our face, neck, and chest, so you can often handle a tretinoin at a higher percentage than you can on the face, neck, and chest. So usually I recommend a 0.5% or 1% tretinoin, dime-sized amount, split it between your two hands and put it on the backs of your hands. Do that every night if you can. Of course, with tretinoin, I've done other tretinoin videos, start slow and low and gradually increase up to that point. But if you can get up to the point of using a tretinoin on your hands almost every night, 
chef's kiss, they'll be looking good. Other things that we can do to increase collagen stores and to help co counteract the thinning of the skin is um, re laser resurfacing with Fraxel or CO2 or Halo, ablative or non-ablative fractionated resurfacing devices. Fraxel is my favorite and also combining it with something like a peel, a ZO3 step peel, TCA peel, Jesner's peel, there are other peels that we can do on the hands at the same time as lasers but only go to a laser fellowship trained provider or someone who's very well versed in lasers because you don't want to have a complication or scarring. So mindfulness, again, you know, medically, legally, I have to say, make sure that you're going to somebody very highly trained, not just getting this done at a muddy spa because lasers combined with peels can be very dangerous in untrained hands. But I think that doing a Fraxel on the backs of the hands is one of the best things you can do as well for improving texture and to help rejuvenate thin, wrinkled skin on the backs of the hands. In addition, using some type of alpha hydroxy acid on the hands or even a beta hydroxy acid, more so alpha hydroxy acid, um, toners or creams on the backs of the hands could be very beneficial also. So using like a glycolic acid or using a lactic acid or using a vitamin C on the backs of the hands could be also useful for me personally what I do for the backs of my hands in addition to using tretinoin cream on the backs of my hands every night and in the morning I use the Zio complexion renewal pads where I just put them on the backs of my hands after um, sometimes using it on my face um, even when I don't use it on my face which I rarely do these days I still just use it on the back of my hands and I do that every morning then I put my sunscreen on so always remember to wear sunscreen on the back of your hands and reapply your sunscreen on the back of your hands just like you do on your face neck and chest so it's really important especially for my younger beauties who are you know in their 20s and 30s start now and that will save you in you know your 40s 50s and 60s and beyond also using driving gloves are not a bad idea having some driving gloves in your car when you're you know get in the car people may make fun of you at a red light when they see that you're wearing driving gloves but at the end of the day it'll keep your hands protected um, physically in addition to having um, you know either physical or chemical blocking sunscreen as well and then if you guys get your nails done you know make sure that even though the you know nail technician may say it's an LED light it's not UV LED can also cause atrophy and brown spots so no matter what always bring gloves for your hands when you're putting it in the um, LED lights and even if the technician says hey this is just a, a you know, LED light it's not a UV light saying I'm sorry I'm a nerd I'm just gonna wear these gloves anyway doctor's orders I feel like we showed a Pico laser now I need to show you Fraxel laser so this is Fraxel we have lasers in every room here and um, oh yeah I have to show you guys the sunset look how pretty that is okay so my office is in Newport Beach, California, and the sunsets are amazing. So this is Fraxel. This is the Fraxel laser. This is the laser that you would use to help combat uh, thin, wrinkled skin on the hands. So a treatment with Fraxel would help rejuvenate the hands through the mechanism of, of action of collagen stimulation, elastin synthesis, and to kind of thicken up the thin, wrinkled hands, uh, skin on the hands. And then you would use the Pico for uh, removing brown spots. And then using that in conjunction with, you know, uh, a tretinoin at home, alpha glycolic acid pads if you have them, and, um, you know, a good thick hand cream. Um, would help rejuvenate the hands as well. So it's just a mixture of different things that you can do. Um, everyone will kind of find what works best for them, but just keep in mind there's in-office procedures that we can use to make the hands look rejuvenated and healthy. And then what you do at home from photo protection, um, topicals that you're using at home, and you know just living a healthy lifestyle um, will be beneficial for hand rejuvenation as well. So what causes hand wrinkles? Hand wrinkles happen because the dermis and the epidermis, which are the uppermost layers of the skin, thin over time. So wrinkles become more apparent because that skin gets thinner. So things that thicken the skin like tretinoin and fraxel resurfacing will help mitigate some of those changes that we see. What causes protruding veins on the hands? Protruding veins on the hands and protruding tendons and skeletonized structures of the hands happens because the subcutaneous fat and subcutaneous tissues thin over time. So it's almost like the structural support of our hands starts melting and you start to see all these things through the skin because it's just thinner. And so things that we can do to add volume back like radius or other biostimulatory fillers to add that volume back will make the veins, protruding veins and tendons look less apparent and they'll be kind of fuller and more volumized, which will make the hands look healthier and younger. Now what causes hand dryness? Hands, because of the 
location of where they are are going to be more susceptible to trauma. So in evolution, our skin has become thicker and thicker skinned essentially, if you will, and literally, to protect our hands from mechanical trauma. All day, every day, every day of our lives from the day that we're born to our very last day. And because of that, kind of robust, thicker stratum corneum, it makes the hands more prone to dryness or cracks or fissuring or wrinkles or calluses or all the things that happen on our hands. So it's not just something that lotion alone is going to correct. You need to use treatments that are going to exfoliate that dead stratum corneum layer skin off and going to hydrate from within. So use of creams that have ceramides and natural moisturization factors can be really beneficial too, especially when you sleep. If you really want to promote you know, um, absorption of some of the products, what you can do is sometimes get a really thick hand cream, especially if it's, a, if it's the dry, cold winter months and your hands are feeling really, really dry, using some type of like emollient like aquaphor or vaseline putting it on your hands wrapping them up in saran wrap or putting ziploc bags over them and then putting like a sock over them while you sleep it's almost like a paraffin wax as you sleep because those treatments are going to promote absorption and pushing of the products into the hands to hydrate them from within under what we call in dermatology under occlusion with warmth because the sock over your hand is going to increase the temperature which is going to increase the absorption of like the emollient or barrier restoration creams or emollients that you're using at night. So that's something that we can do in derm residency when we have um, our eczema clinic and our pediatric eczema clinic. We do those types of treatments for um, you know kiddos that would have dry fissuring, cracked hands, who had a more atopic diathesis and more prone to you know barrier you know restoration. So dry cracked hands is just a product of that thick stratum corneum layer on the hands that also makes us more prone to other things that are not so cosmetically elegant on the hands. So what do I use on my hands? So my hands get thrashed every day, you know, being a most skin cancer surgeon for decades, scrubbing in, scrubbing out, using Hibiclen surgery, scrub, surgical gloves, my hands, you know, have taken a beating. So I really had to work on rejuvenating my own hands. So as far as, of course I do Fraxel on my hands, I haven't needed Pico yet, knock on wood, but as far as products that I use on my hands, Tretinoin, and I use it every night, I take about a dime sized amount, not a pea size, because for my hands I use a dime sized amount, I put it onto both fingers and then I apply it to the backs of my hands every night before bed, and then I sleep with it on. And in the morning, I use the Zio Complexion Renewal Pads, which has a mix of AHAs and BHAs in it as well, because acids like glycolic acid peels, lactic acid, any other type of like acid that maybe your skin likes would be good to put on the backs of your hands in the morning. And then of course sunscreen all day and reapply it throughout the day. Sometimes I'll use a 40% urea cream. I kind of mix it up. And again, I'm always doing Fraxel on all the skin all over my body, including my hands. So that's my secret. Okay, talking about um, other products that I use personally, in addition to a tretinoin and the complexion renewal pads, sometimes I will use my MDR retinol and vitamin C on the backs of my hands. And remember, your skin's always guessing. It's a dynamic, living, breathing organ system. And using like products like the vitamin C um, will really be helpful, the MDR vitamin C. And then um, the retinol, which is the RXR retinol, where did it go? This one is also very, very helpful. Look at it, and it says, hi, my beauties, because you guys are my beauties. Um, using the RXR retinol um, will also help um, fade brown spots and stimulate collagen in the hands as well. So these are products that you use on your face and um, helps rejuvenate skin on the face. But if you use them on your hands, you know it also will have the same effect. But again, sometimes the hand, because that skin is more robust and a little bit thicker and um, a little bit you know, more um, hardy, you might wanna use um, other treatments as well. So hopefully after watching this video, um, you'll learn a little bit more about hand rejuvenation and maybe pick some products, treatments, or at-home remedies that would help keep your hands rejuvenated. But you always want your hand skin to match the skin on your face, neck, and chest as much as possible. Because even me, being a Mohs micrographic skin cancer surgeon for decades, my hands got thrashed and scrubbing in, scrubbing out, using gloves and always working with my hands. It's something that I really have to work on as well as the skin on my face. So hopefully this helps you guys. Love you and we'll see you next week.